Okay, recording. All right, I haven't quite finished 3.2. I was gonna do that today and start 3.3, which is on trig, to trig derivatives. Okay, tomorrow's quiz is gonna be on 3.1 and 3.2. So anything I do from 3.3, Today and tomorrow won't be in the quiz. It'll be on 3.1 and 3.2 type of derivatives. Okay. Okay, yesterday in class, derivative of x squared e to the x, so product root. So first times the derivative of the second, the derivative of the second is e to the x, plus e to the x times the derivative of the first, which is 2x. Factor out the e to the x, x squared plus 2x e to the x. Number two, quotient root, bottom times the derivative of the top, which is one, minus the top times the derivative of the bottom, which is one. So it means you don't have to write it. All over x plus one squared. Uh, the x's cancel out, you end up with one minus a minus one, which is two. So two over x plus one squared should be the answer. Okay. All right, uh, if you got it wrong, don't worry about it. You know, it was meant to be low pressure. Um, the thing I didn't want you to do is not try, not try anything. Okay, so you should have at least given it a try, I suppose is the way to say it. All right, uh, then some leftover problems from section 3.2. Okay, problem 45. You're given f of x is e to the x times some unknown g of x. They tell you g of zero is two, g prime of zero is five, find f prime of zero. So f prime of x is first times the derivative of the second, e to the x, g prime of x, plus second function, g of x, times the derivative of the first. The derivative of the first is just e to the x. And now if I want f prime of zero, I put zero there, 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 and there. So e to the zero, g prime of zero, plus g of zero, e to the zero. Okay, e to the zero is one times g prime of zero, they tell me it's five plus g of zero, they tell me is two, times e to the zero, which is one. So that comes out to be seven. Okay. 47, they tell me this, g of x is x times f of x, f of three is four, f prime of three is negative two. Find the equation of the tangent line at x equals three, of g that is. Okay, so first, what is g of three? So plug in three, it's three times f of three. f of three is given to be four, so three times four is 12. So the point is three, 12. That's a point, I need to slope. So g prime of x, product root, first times the derivative of the second, x times f prime of x, plus second function, f prime of x times the derivative of the first, derivative of x is just one. Okay, and I want to plug in three because we want the equation of the tangent line at x equals three. So three, f prime of three plus f prime of three. So f prime of three is given to be negative two. So that's three times negative two plus negative two or negative eight. So slope point. So y minus y one equals m times x minus x one. Okay, so whatever this graph looks like, okay, this is made up. You don't even have to draw this if you don't want to. But whatever the graph looks like at the point 312, there's a slope. Okay, and what is the slope? It's negative eight. So actually, this is not a good picture of the slope. A negative eight means it should go down. But anyway, that's just an idea. Okay, 49, unfortunately, is one of those where <clears throat> if we were meeting on campus, it'd be perfect because I can show you. you know, this, but I can also show you the whiteboard, but I can't show you both, unfortunately. So all I can do is kind of go like this. F and G are functions given below. Okay. <clears throat> and U of X is F of X, G of X. V of X is F of X divided by G of X. Find U prime of one, V prime of five. Okay, so how do I do that? So I'm gonna have to flip back and forth between here and the book. <clears throat> so u of x is f of x g of x. So u prime of x by the product rule is first times derivative of the second, 
plus second times the derivative of the first. Okay. Now they want to plug in one. They're asking for u prime of one. So I plug in one, f of one, g prime of one, g of one, <clears throat> f prime of one. Okay. Now if it says f of one or g of one, that's the y coordinate. G prime or F prime means slope. Keep that in mind. Okay, so F of one is two. F of one is two. G of one is one. G of one. Let's see. I don't think I have that right. Oh yeah. G of one is one, right? The Y coordinate. The primes mean slope. So at x equals one, what's the slope of the g line? Okay, that looks like it's negative one. F prime of one is two at one. The slope right here is two over one and up two. Okay, so again, if you're asking for f or g, y coordinate, just like before, pre-calc. New stuff with the prime gives me slope. So we are emphasize that derivative means slope, in particular slope of the tangent line. <clears throat> okay, so two times negative one plus one times two comes out to be zero. All right, do the same thing for V prime. They're asking for V prime of five. So one, two, three, four, five. So for these graphs, we need the y coordinate and also the slopes. Okay. <clears throat> so V prime, bottom times the derivative of the top, minus the top times the derivative of the bottom, all over the bottom squared. Now I plug in five. So G of five, G of five is two right there. That's two, that's two. F of five is three. F of five is one, two, three. <laughs> now the primes, the slopes. Okay, so the slope, F prime of five is negative one third. Okay, if you look at two convenient points, maybe this one and this one, it's over three and down one. So the slope is negative one third. That's where I got the negative one third from. And then G prime of five is two thirds. So right here, what's the slope? If I compare it with this one, it's over one, two, three, and up two. Okay, so I plug everything in basically now. Two times negative one third minus three times two thirds all over two squared. Okay, so I just cleaned it up. That's negative two thirds minus two over four, multiply top and bottom by three. That's negative two minus six over 12, negative two thirds. Okay, then one other question I was gonna do and then I'm done with the section is 33. Let's look back at 33. Find the equation of the tangent and normal line. So normal is perpendicular to the tangent. Just do the neg negative reciprocal stuff. Okay, y equals two x e to the x at zero, zero. Okay. So here's what you do. The derivative, so first function, second function. So product root, right? First times derivative of the second, second times derivative of the first. So two x e to the x plus second function e to the x times two. Okay, then I plug in zero. Zero wipes that out, zero, one times two is two. So the slope is two. Goes to the origin. Y minus zero equals M times X minus zero or Y equals two X. That's the tangent line. Normal line, the slope is the negative reciprocal of two. That's just negative one half, right? So remember for perpendicular lines, okay. The slopes are negative reciprocals of each other. So y equals negative a half x. Okay, so that's all. 
All right, I am officially done with section two. So I'm gonna start section three, which is on trig derivatives. And once again, you can put all this on your cheat sheet. If we were meeting face to face, I'd make you guys memorize it. Okay, so 3.3, what are the derivatives of the trig functions? Derivatives of the trig functions. Okay, so before we do that, I have to go over some limits. <clears throat> So here's a pretty big limit. <clears throat> okay, yeah, now you wanna get comfortable with these because this will show up over and over again in calc one and calc two. Okay, you should already know sine squared X plus cosine squared X is equal to one. Among other things, that means sine squared X is one minus cosine squared X. If I subtract cosine squared X on both sides. Similarly, cosine squared X is one minus sine squared X. Okay. This is an important limit. You definitely want to write this one down. Okay, we saw it before. Limit as x approaches zero of sine x over x is equal to one. There are some homework problems later that involve that. Okay, limit as x approaches zero of sine x over x is one. Okay, this angle and that angle and that angle have to match. Okay, and if you ever do forget about it. So again, this is one of those where if we were meeting face to face, I'd make you memorize it. Okay, since you can put it on your cheat sheet, it doesn't matter. But if I were to make you memorize it, you can just go, you know, sine of 0.01 divided by 0.01. And 0.99998, right? And even gets closer if I do sine of 0 0.0001 divided by 0 0.0001. 0.99999, you know, can't even read it. See, it's really, really close to one, right? Okay, so we saw earlier, this limit is one, <clears throat> okay? There's another limit that I need to show you, okay? So for the next five, 10 minutes, I'm going over the derivation of the trig derivatives. So you can quote unquote tune out. I know I really shouldn't be saying that, but you're not responsible for this. I'm responsible for this. Okay, so I'll tell you when to uh, wake up again, I guess. <clears throat> but so if you're interested, you know, you know, one way I could do it is just say, okay, here's the derivatives, use it. Okay, but somebody might be saying, how, you know, how do you get those derivatives? Where did they come up from, right? So in case you're interested, here they are. <clears throat> okay, so you definitely need this one. I need to show you this limit, although it's not as important, but I'll show it to you. Okay, you can't plug in directly. Okay, limit x approaches zero of cosine x minus one over x. I'll be going over this pretty rapidly also. So you might look at this and say, huh, I don't know what you're doing. Okay, but you might understand a little bit of it. That's all I care about that I showed it to you. Okay, if I take out a negative one, it looks like this, one minus cosine X over X. Okay, I multiply top and bottom by one plus cosine X. So these become conjugates. There's a negative outside. I turned that around. The opposite of cosine X minus one is one minus cosine X. Okay, multiply at the top one minus cosine squared X. That's equal to sine squared X from over here. There's a negative out. And the limit of a product is a product of the limits. I can break it into limit X approaches zero sine X over X times limit X approaches zero of sine X over one plus cosine X, okay? And we already know this limit was one. So I have a negative one. Here, if you plug in, you have sine of zero is zero over one plus cosine of zero is one. So it's zero divided by two is zero. Anyway, the limit is zero. Okay, so I've established that this limit is zero. Okay, now the six trig functions, sine, cosine, tangent, cotangent, secant, cosecant, what are their derivatives? <laughs> okay, again, I'm going rapidly and you're not responsible for this. So derivative of sine of X with respect to X is limit H approaches zero, sine of X plus H minus sine of X over H. Okay, you have a law in trig that the sine of a sum, sine of X plus H, is sine x cosine x h plus cosine x sine h, that's a property of the sine of the sum, minus sine x over h. I put these two together, I factor out the common factor of sine x. So it goes limit h approaches zero, sine x cosine h minus one over h, plus limit h approaches zero, cosine x sine h over h. Okay, this I can factor out, it's constant with respect to h. This is a constant with respect to h, so I factor that out. So now it looks like this, sine x times
times limit h approaches zero, cosine h minus one over h, plus cosine x limit h approaches zero, sine h over h, okay? And now we have established this limit as being one. All that happens is you change the letters, right? Instead of h, instead of x, it's h, okay? And we established this limit was zero. So I have sine x times zero plus cosine x times one comes out to be cosine x. Okay, bottom line, so you can pay attention just for a moment. Derivative of sine is cosine. Sine of x prime is cosine x. Derivative of sine is a cosine. That's not too bad. So a natural assumption was, well, maybe it's a derivative of the cosine sine. It's a good guess. Unfortunately, it isn't, but it's close. Okay, so I play the same game, derivative of the cosine. Limit h approaches zero, cosine x plus h minus cosine x over h. Oh, you don't have to pay attention that closely anymore. Okay, <clears throat> cosine of a sum is cosine x, cosine h minus sine x, sine h minus cosine x over h. Again, bring these two together, factor out the common factor of cosine x. So limit h approaches zero, cosine x, cosine h minus one over h minus limit h approaches zero, sine x, sine h over h. Play the same game. Factor out cosine x, factor out sine of x. They're constants as far as h is concerned. So I have cosine x, limit h approaches zero, cosine h minus one over h. I established that that was zero. Minus sine x, limit h approaches zero, sine h over h. I established that that's one. So I have cosine x times zero minus sine x times one, negative sine x. Okay, so pay attention just for a moment again. Derivative of cosine is not, is not sine, it's negative sine x. Okay, so what you should put down on your cheat sheet, I'll show it to you in the text later. Derivative of sine is cosine. Derivative of cosine is negative sine. Okay, all the other trig functions you can write as ratios, something divided by something and do the quotient rule. Now that we know derivative of sine is cosine, and now that we know derivative of cosine is sine, all the other four trig functions you can write in terms of sine and cosine and go from there. <clears throat> so what's the derivative of tangent? Write it as sine over cosine prime, use the quotient root. So it's bottom times the derivative of the top. We now know the derivative of the top is cosine x minus temporarily sine x times the derivative of the bottom, the derivative of cosine is negative sine x. That's a double negative, so that becomes a positive over cosine squared x. That's gonna give me cosine squared x plus sine squared x. What is cosine squared plus sine squared from trig? One. So I have one over cosine squared x, which we would normally write as secant squared x. Okay, so pay attention for a couple of seconds again. Derivative of the tangent is not that nice, secant squared x. Okay, you can put that on your cheat sheet. If we were meeting face to face, I'd make you memorize it. <clears throat> okay, cotangent, derivative, same thing, cosine over sine. Bottom times the derivative of the top. We now know the derivative of the top is negative sine x minus the top times the derivative of the bottom, cosine x, over the square of the denominator, sine squared x. Okay, the top is negative sine squared x minus cosine squared x. That's negative one, right? Negative one over sine squared x, negative cosecant squared x. Okay, so a quick summary for that one. Pay attention for a couple of seconds. Derivative of cotangent of x is negative cosecant squared x. Okay, I'll show you in the textbook where it's all summarized. <clears throat> and then secant is one over the cosine. So bottom times derivative of the top, what's the derivative of one? Zero. Minus the top, one, times the derivative of the bottom, derivative of the cosine x we now know is negative sine x, all over the square of the denominator, cosine squared x, double negative, sine x over cosine squared x, which is correct, but there's, that's not the normal way we write it. Okay, if I decide to break it up like this, this is the same thing as this, right? One over cosine x, sine over cosine x, right? Do you agree? That's one times sine x, this is cosine x, cosine x. And one over cosine is secant, sine over cosine is tangent. Okay, so quick summary, pay attention for a few seconds. Derivative of secant x is secant x tangent x. And finally, cosecant x, it's one over sine x. Quotient root, bottom times derivative of the top, zero, minus the top times derivative of the bottom, 
cosine x all over to square root of the denominator sine squared x. So negative cosine x over sine squared x, which is correct, but we'll break it up into negative one over sine x times cosine x over sine x. That's the same as that. So it's negative cosecant x cotangent x. Okay, so summary, derivative of cosecant x, negative cosecant x cotangent x. Okay, I went over all of this very quickly. Yes, I, re I realize that. Your head might be spinning. I have no idea what he did. That's okay. You're not responsible for that. Okay. But just to show you, it is provable. If you want to go slowly and try to digest it, it is provable. You're not responsible for that. I'm responsible for that. Okay. So now what are you responsible for? Okay. So you have to pay attention again. So there's a nice, so yeah, uh, you want to put this on your sheet, formula sheet number two. Limit theta approaches zero, sine theta over theta equals one. Or I guess when I give it to you, it said X. It's the same thing. Okay. But the six trig derivatives are on page 193. Here we go. Okay, so put these on your next cheat sheet, next formula sheet. Okay, so derivative of sine is cosine. Derivative of cosine is negative sine. Derivative of tangent is secant squared. Derivative of cotangent is negative cosecant squared. Derivative of cosecant, negative cosecant cotangent. Derivative of secant is secant tangent. So there we go. So in some sense, you should be happy we're not meeting face to face because I make you memorize it. Okay. <clears throat> if you do have to memorize it, there's one nice trick about the signs S I G N. Which ones get a negative? The co functions. Look at the co functions. Co sine has a negative. Cosecant has a negative. Cotangent has a negative. Okay, so if we were meeting face to face to help you memorize it, I would say the co functions have a negative. Cosine, cosecant, cotangent. The ones that don't have a co don't have a negative. So sine, positive, tangent, positive, secant, positive. So that's just one thing that might help you to memorize this. Okay, there are sort of nice pairs. I mean, you know, sine and cosine, right? Secant squared, cosecant squared. Okay, kind of natural. Secant tangent, cosecant cotangent. Okay, so that's also a natural pairing. Right? But again, for me, you can put all these on your formula sheet. Okay. Okay, so those are the trig derivatives. And here we go. Something. So, what do we have? So, we're starting 3.3, 3, 1 to 27 odd, 31, 33, 39 to 45 odd. Okay. And for those of you who don't have the book, 196. See, that gives you up to about 13-ish and some more, some more. And I can't really show you all the stuff at the bottom too well. I think you can see that. Okay, and 31, 33. Yeah, I don't think you have to do 35 and 37. And then on this side, what are we supposed to go up to, 45? Yeah, there we go. Okay. All right, here we go. <clears throat> Number one, f of x equals x squared sine x. Product rule. So f prime of x is first times the derivative of the second. We now know the derivative of sine x is cosine x plus the second function sine x Careful, not the derivative of the second function, just copy the second function times the derivative of the first, which is 2x. Okay, that's pretty much it. Maybe just a little bit of touch up, put the 2x in the front. That's the normal way to write it. So x squared cosine x plus 2x sine x. <clears throat> okay, five, y equals secant theta tangent theta, product rule. Okay, so, Y prime 
first times the derivative of the second, secant theta times the derivative of the tangent of theta, which we now know as secant squared theta, plus the second function, tangent theta, times the derivative of the first, the derivative of secant theta is secant theta tangent theta. And once again, a little bit of cleanup, that's secant cubed theta plus secant theta tangent squared theta. Yeah, let me raise this up again so you can kind of see it a bit better. Okay, number nine looks like a quotient root, x over two minus tangent x. <clears throat> Okay, so dy dx means derivative. Bottom times the derivative of the top, derivative of x is one. So you don't even have to write it technically. Minus the top, x, times the derivative of the bottom. So what's the derivative of two minus tangent x? Derivative of two is zero. Derivative of negative tangent x is negative secant squared x. Treat the negative as a coefficient of negative one. Okay, and that's a double negative. So maybe just make that a positive. So final answer, two minus tangent x plus x secant squared x over two minus tan x squared. And just stop there. Okay, 17 actually does ask you to prove the formula for the derivative of the cosecant. I ran through it rapidly, but I'll go a little bit slower now. So to find a derivative of the cosecant, okay, we now know it's a derivative with respect to x of one over sine x. Okay. In fact, uh, you may not be able to derive the formula for the derivatives of sine or cosine, but you should be able to do tangent, cotangent, secant, and cosecant because they're based in terms of the sine and cosine. Okay, and you already know those derivatives. <clears throat> okay, so what's the derivative of one over sine x? Bottom times the derivative of the top. What's the derivative of one? Zero minus the top, one, times the derivative of the bottom. We now know the derivative of sine x is cosine x, all over the square of the denominator is sine squared x. All right, so that's nothing. So negative cosine x over sine squared x. And again, I break it up into this to get it to look like the formula. Make this negative one over sine x times cosine x over sine x, that's the same thing, right? Negative one times cosine x is negative cosine x. Sine x times sine x is sine squared x. And one over sine x by definition is cosecant. Cosine over sine is cotangent. So there it is, negative cosecant x, cotangent x. So that's the answer to 17. Okay. All right. Okay, and let me see what else that I wanna show you here. Okay, 13 is gonna be kind of messy. Look at 13, t sine t over one plus t. <clears throat> so at first glance it's a quotient and it is, which means I have to do bottom times the derivative of the top. But look at the top, t sine of t is a product. So it's another one of those more complicated ones where there's a product root inside a quotient root. Okay. And by the way, 15 is kind of similar. I'll let you try 15 on your own, but it looks like it's a product root inside a product root, right? It's a product inside a product. Okay. And you have a choice there, maybe 15, let theta cosine theta be the first function and sine of theta be the second function. Or you could also set, theta to be the first function and cosine theta sine theta to be the second function. It's up to you. I would choose to split up the two trig functions. So for 15, I would say that theta cosine theta be the first function, sine of theta be the second function. Okay, that's my hint. Okay, but let me do 13 now. <clears throat> oh, I guess I did 15 anyway. Well, that's fine. T sine T over one plus T. Okay, quotient root is you copy the bottom, one plus T, and then it's times the derivative of the top, but the top itself is a product. So right here, I have to do the product root, right here. 
So first function is t and parentheses around the whole thing. T times the derivative of sine t, which we now know is cosine t, plus the second function sine of t times the derivative of the first, but the derivative of the first is just one. Okay, so everything right here right now, cover this up. That right there is bottom times the derivative of the top. Bottom, derivative of the top. Minus top times derivative of the bottom. So t sine of t times the derivative of the bottom, which is one. So technically you don't have to write anything. All over one plus t squared. Okay, and that's it. And for that one, I would say, don't even bother multiplying it out. It, it doesn't really help mess it up. Although I could see something that would cancel. I notice there's gonna be a T sine of T that's gonna cancel that T sine of T. So it might come out somewhat nicer, but you know, whatever. All right, looks like I did do 15 after all. So I'll go ahead and show it to you. <clears throat> You've got a product of three things. F of theta is theta, cosine theta, sine theta, okay? So again, my recommendation was let this be considered the first function. This is the second function. So my first function is theta cosine theta, which is a product in itself. So I have a product root inside a product root. All right, here we go. First function, theta cosine theta, times the derivative of the second. Derivative of sine theta, we now know is cosine theta. plus second function sine of theta times the derivative of the first. So I have to differentiate. Again, what does differentiate mean? Take a derivative of theta cosine theta. That itself is a product. So right here now within my two pens in parentheses, I'm doing the product root of this theta cosine theta. So first function theta times the derivative of the second. So derivative of cosine theta, we now know as negative sine theta plus the second function cosine theta times the derivative of the first, the derivative of theta is just one. Okay, so there it is. I, I decided to just stop right there. That was enough for that one. Okay, uh, so 25. 25A, again, skip B, anything that has a graphing calculator icon. Forget about it. <clears throat> Find the equation of a tangent line to the curve y equals 2x sine x at the point pi over 2 pi. Okay. Recurring theme. We'll see that over and over and over and over again. Right. So this is what we have. So how about the first function is 2x, second function is sine x. You normally wouldn't want to have the first function just two, then the second function would be x sine x, then you have to do another product group after that. So let the first function, if there's a coefficient, count it as part of the first function, it's two x <clears throat> sine x. All right, so product group, first function two x times the derivative of the second. So what's the derivative of sine x? Cosine x. <clears throat> Plus second function sine x, times the derivative of the first. What's the derivative of two x? Two. Okay, the next step, I'm gonna put the two in front. I didn't feel like rewriting the whole thing just for that. I'm just gonna plug in. And while I'm in the process of plugging in, I'll sneak the two in front. Okay, now what am I supposed to plug in? Pi over two. So what about the pi? That's the y coordinate. So if this expression had any y, I'd plug in the pi, but it doesn't. Okay, so I'll put pi over two right there, right there, and right there. So y prime of pi over two is two times pi over two, cosine pi over two plus two, there's this two I stuck in front, sine pi over two. Okay, now why did I cross all this out? The cosine of pi over two, cosine of 90 degrees is zero. That's what's uh, that about. So I cross all that out. So that's nothing. Sine of pi over two is one. Two times one is two. So my M is two. All right, so y minus y1 equals m 
times x minus x1. You'll see that over and over and over again. So y minus y1 is pi equals to slope to x minus x1 pi over 2. You could stop there, but you may notice that it comes out to be just y equals 2x. If I distribute 2 times negative pi over 2, I get negative pi. So both sides have a minus pi. So if you add the pi's, they're gone. So y equals 2x. But if you stop here, that's fine. OK. All right. Thirty-three. Horizontal tangent. What is horizontal tangent? Slope is zero. Derivative is zero. Okay, we'll use that language quite a bit in this class also. So if you hear horizontal tangent, it means derivative is zero. Horizontal tangent. Y prime is equal to zero. Okay. All right, so f of x is x plus two sine x. f prime of x, so what's the derivative? Derivative of x is one. Derivative of two sine x is two cosine x. If you have a number times a function, the derivative is the number times the derivative of the function, cosine x. Set it equal to zero. So cosine x is negative a half. I go back to my unit circle. I want the x coordinate to be negative a half. That's there and there. Okay, and what are those angles? That's 120 degrees or two pi over three. This is 240 degrees or four pi over three. And you can keep going around the circle as many times as you want. So x is equal to two pi over three plus two k pi or x equals four pi over three plus two k pi, where k is an integer, okay? Again, some of you are saying, what's this two k pi stuff, okay? If you plug in zero, then of course you have two pi over three. If you plug in one, you're adding two pi, which means from here, you're adding one revolution. If you plug in two, you have four pi, that's two revolutions. If you plug in three, you have six pi, that's three revolutions, so you just keep, having a different integer, and you can have negative values too. So if I let k is negative one, it's two pi over three minus two pi, I go backwards one revolution. And you can plug in negative two, we get negative four pi, we go backwards two revolutions and three revolutions and four and so on. Okay, so that's what the two k pi stuff is all about. Okay. All right, so final answer for this one is x is two pi over three plus two k pi or four pi over three plus two k pi, where k is an integer. Okay. All right, then let's see. I think I was gonna show you one of the 39 and on type, and maybe that's about it for today. Find the limit. So key theorem is this one. Limit as theta approaches zero, sine of theta over theta equals one, or it can be X or whatever. Okay. Okay, there's one key item I need to share with you here. If theta approaches zero, K theta also approaches zero for any constant K. We're gonna take advantage of that fact. If theta approaches zero, K theta approaches zero for any constant K. The example that we're gonna use in problem 39 is this, if X approaches zero, five X approaches zero also. <clears throat> Okay, x approaches zero, plug in 0 0.001, this becomes 0 0.005, it still approaches zero. If I plug in 0 0.001, this becomes 0 0.005, it approaches zero. Same thing, it's double-sided. So I plug in a negative, negative 0 0.001, this becomes negative 0 0.005, it still approaches zero. 
Okay, so one key idea for doing these problems is very technically, when I want this limit, this angle, this angle, and this angle all have to match, okay? So whatever you see here has to match that and technically has to match this, but not so much really. We're actually gonna forgive this to a certain extent because of this property. If theta approaches zero, K theta approaches zero for any constant K. So like if X approaches zero, five X approaches zero. <clears throat> okay, so you say, what are you talking about now, right? So problem 39, maybe that's as much as I'll do here. Thirty-nine. Limit as x approaches zero of sine of five x over three x. Okay, so how do I do that one? Limit x approaches zero of sine of five x over three x. Okay. So the game you want to play is I have to force this angle this angle and this angle to be the same, <clears throat> okay? There's really not much you're gonna do with five X in terms of sine. Technically you can, but that's gonna be an absolute mess, okay? In other words, I don't wanna force this to be a three X to match these. It's much easier to force this to be a five X, okay? You can't do a lot of tricks with sine five X. So how can I force this to be a five? It's a three, multiply top and bottom by five thirds. So if I multiply top and bottom by five thirds, this will cancel out giving me five X. This five thirds, I'm not gonna touch this. In fact, I'm gonna bring it all the way out. I'm allowed to do that. Right, so the bottom here becomes five X. So five thirds limit X approaches zero, sine of five X over five X. Okay, that now matches that. And technically, this also should be a 5x, it's just x, but that's where I take advantage of this also. If x approaches zero, then 5x also approaches zero, okay? So whenever you see x approaches zero, you can make this whatever you need to. I need it to be 5x, just pretend it's a 5x, okay? So then that does match that, which does match that, which now means this limit is indeed one. Okay, so again, if x approaches zero, so does 5x approach zero. So you can, maybe I just write it. You can pretend it says, 5x approaches zero because as x approaches zero, 5x also approaches zero. So I've met the requirements that this matches this and matches this. So this whole thing is now one. So I have five thirds times one, which is equal to five thirds. Okay, so that's how, that's how you do that crazy one like that. And there's a few other problems that are like that and I'll show you that maybe starting tomorrow. Okay, so the key idea here is that as x approaches zero, kx approaches zero or theta. If theta approaches zero, k times theta also approaches zero for any constant k, all right? All right, so that's as much as I was gonna show you today. Uh, so tomorrow I'll do more trig and give you some time to do the quiz tomorrow. The quiz tomorrow won't have any trig, just sections one and two. Okay, uh, last few minutes, if anybody has any question, you can either unmute yourself or put it in the chat. Otherwise we'll quit. Okay, so anybody with a question, please? I don't see or hear anything, so we'll call it a day. All right, everybody, have a good day. We'll see everybody tomorrow. Okay, bye. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Philip, I got you. Thank you.